What's up guys? Today, I'll be upgrading my Daiwa Tatula 100 HSL, this is a 2019 version. If you guys haven't watched my previous videos, I basically upgraded the spool with the Chameleon shallow spool. So I basically converted this small Tatula into a BF, uh, BFS reel, bait finesse reel, or another fancy word is saying ultralight bait caster. And with the stock bearings, it casts very, very good. Cast light lures. I love to throw like a 1 16th ounce jig head. And in my last video that I was out, I was casting this 1 16th ounce jig head with this epic bait mold. There's slick swim bait and paddle, two inches. And I was slaying just about every single species out there. Fall is here and it's so much fun throwing these small light lures. But finally, my bearings came in and I bought these Roro bearings from uh, the AliExpress place that banned me. I actually had my brother buy it for me and it took him like a little over a month to get to me. And look, they have it in a Ray Studio bag instead of a Roro bag, which is kind of interesting. If you buy anything from Roro, from RoroLore.com, they actually have it within their own bags. But anyways, enough about that store that banned me. Let's open up these bearings and uh, let's check out the performance very quick. I should have my bearing too right here from Roro. Pretty cool, eh? Put it here and, oh yeah, spins really nicely. Smooth as butter. Check out this guy. Same thing. All right, so anyways, there's only two bearings you need to change for this reel. Unfortunately, this reel is very interesting. You have to change the bearing that's on the side plate, which is gonna be the easy one. That's the easier one, okay? The tougher one is actually sitting on this side of the reel. And I'll show you very quick before we disassemble the reel. So this one's the easy one, right? You just take out that pin and change it. And the other bearing is actually not on the spool. Check that out. It's actually sitting behind here, okay? And um, yeah, you, can, you can try to pull this thing out, but it's not, gonna, it's not gonna come out this way. It only comes out from the side plate here. Uh, so you have to take the whole thing apart, which I guess I will have to do. Anyway, let's just do this one. And I, I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a headache. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. By the way, this is a, a cap puller for the side of your knob, but I use it to just pull my pins out. Looks nice and easy. And I think you could also use this to pull the bearing out too. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Easy installation. Now, let's talk about these bearings for a second. See that? Okay. And this side. This side should be facing the spool. Vice versa, you know, this side versus this side. The flush side should be facing the spool. So, pop this baddie in. Okay. And then put this one side in and make sure you take your thumb and just cover the whole thing so that it doesn't fling out and just pinch them in, okay? Get one side in, get the other one in. Presto, very easy, okay? Anyways, let's put these to the side. I'll put it back into the Ray Studio bag because we can always reuse this. But before I do that, let's take a look at this. I know I didn't clean it or anything, but it's stock bearings. Yep, it has some oil and it. it doesn't really, you know, continue spinning. So yeah, it's gonna be very interesting once I have this upgraded. I mean, I could have put regular ceramic hybrid bearings in it and it'll work really well, but I wanna throw stuff from the one to 10 grams. And the micro bearings, in my opinion, doesn't really help you get super far distances, but it actually lets you throw things easier. Um, I'm gonna throw it for a while. If it doesn't pan out well, I'm just gonna use rigor ceramic hybrid bearings because I like to have some distance, especially on a kayak sometimes, especially in this colder weather. Uh, I wanna figure out where they're at. So sometimes being able to cast far is easier, but like certain season where I just know where the fish are at, I like to cast, you know, I don't mind casting short distances, but fall is the only time I like to cast super duper long distances. But uh, yeah, let's uh, take this thing apart. Um, I, uh, I don't think I could just take this off. I think I gotta take this whole thing off first. All 
All right, so I took all the screws out, trying to slowly take this thing apart. Don't want to drop anything. Come on. It's opening for sure. Oh, here it goes. Here it comes. All right, boom. The heck? Oh, are you kidding me? All right, that's a very interesting bearing holder right there. And on this side, you can see it doesn't do anything at all. Can't take it off from here. So I am thinking that you're gonna take that thing off here. Like, I've never seen a, a tattoo like this before. Like, out of videos I've seen, it's like the pin on the side plate, just like this. So, uh, all right, Jembo's gonna risk it. Just gonna try and see what's going on. If I could peel that out, maybe? Can I even spin it? This thing can't even take it out. Oh man, I'm gonna have to go to the forums and see what's going on. Maybe, maybe there's another way of doing this, but I don't know, man. All right, I finally popped it out after some finessing, okay? But basically, the concept is very simple. Uh, you just push this thing back in. It's supposed to eat on the side of the plastic within there. So it should keep everything in place. So let's just pop this guy out, hopefully. Oh, don't want to do that, Jimbo. All right, let's see if we can take this tool here and just slowly pull it out. There we go. You got it? All right. Now let's take our bearing. And again, it's the bearing that goes facing the spool should be this way. Push it in, just like that. And then, I'm gonna push this thing back in there. I wonder if I could use this behind or maybe I'll use my bearing tool, right? Nope, you know, I guess I can. But yeah, basically I need to shove this thing back in and push every pin back onto the side, which I will try to do here on camera. If not, then, uh, you know, I have to do it. Yeah, I have to do it from here. All right, after some finessing using various tools, I got it back in, but I have to say, this is part by far the hardest upgrade I have ever done for any reel because, I mean, why? Why would you do this? Someone tell me why they choose to use this type of retainer compared to, you know, the traditional stuff. But uh, it is what it is. Now we gotta put everything back in. I readjust it when I'm back out in the waters. But wow, there it goes. Upgrade completed with the row row bearings. That is sick and fast. It feels pretty good, man. I hope I don't need to freaking uh, put back like ceramic hybrid bearings on there instead of uh, these micro bearings. But so far it's working good. Let's get out on the water and give it a shot. All right, guys and girls, I never really do like a walk and talk type thing when I holding stuff, but uh, I got the new GoPro 9, Hero 9, and stabilization looks like it's pretty cool, pretty good. So anyways, I'm gonna do just a few cast tests after this upgrade with the chameleon spool, row row bearings, micro bearings that is. Four pound test line, haven't really changed since uh, before. And we're sort of trout magnet. Don't know if it's uh, if it's even possible, but you know this spool is pretty light. You know, six grams. Should at least get a little bit distance, right? Let's give it a shot. I am at eight breaks. I'm gonna leave at eight breaks. Let's see. All right. So I get it out just a little bit, and it's not far. Not far at all, boys and girls. Very interesting. Try to cast a little harder. Okay, yep. Not gonna be possible it's winging it hard. You never really want to wing too hard anyway in these situations. If you can't do it, you just can't do it. But it's good to know what are we pushing our gears to the limit. I see like some bass in front of me, swimming in front of me. That's pretty cool. You want it? Nope. All right, one last cast. All right, so yeah, it's, it's not far at all. It's probably like, <laughs> I don't want to even measure it. To be quite honest, I mean, I don't even know how to say how far far it is, but this is not castable distance. Sure, if you guys are fishing springtime and everything's like right in front of you, you could do it. But this is no, this is no Alpha's air with the row row. That's all I have to say. And I think the Aldebaran would cast further than that too, out of the box with no mods. So um, definitely no go. 
for the trout magnet. Let's put something else in here. I, I will definitely put the, what do you call that? The ice fishing jig and see how that will fare on this. And man, those kids are relentless. All right, let's give this a shot. Oh, oh, that's, that's not too bad. That's like 50% of the way. Okay, for a converted, converted uh, regular reel. Oh, something just hit me. But yeah, for a converted reel, that's pretty impressive. I think uh, I just saw a fish. Yeah, I see his shadow right there. He was just, he was just coming for this. Oh yeah, I just pulled all the freaking fish right in front of me now. Oh, got him, got him. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Whoa, that's what I'm talking about. Come on, land it Jimbo, land it, land it, land it, land it. Hey, 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 easy. Ay, got him, look at that. Testing this uh, upgraded reel and still catching bass at the same time. That is what I'm talking about. All right, off you go, duty. All right, so uh, that was at nine breaks. So I'm gonna check it down just one click and uh, let's see if we can get it out there again and see if it get further. Uh, went left a little bit. Well, that is about 55% of the way. That's still good. It's pretty cool. Let me just bring this in again. Fast reels are great. Just pull them all in. Okay, that is definitely like 55 to 60% of the way. I'll probably jack the brake one more time. I rarely put the brake that low with this reel so far, but you know. I am winging it pretty hard. And there's no problem, so. Oh, there's the backlash, but it went to like 70%. So, oh, the backlash is not too bad too. Like I thumbed that near the end. So I guess it's considered acceptable. So if you guys are master thumb users and if you guys are not uh, in super crazy windy condition, it looks like it's possible. One last cast. Yep, it's a, just a little bit at the, near the end. I thumbed it and it's fixed, I think. Nope, I didn't fix it all the way. There's just one little loop left and there it goes. And I'm still pretty impressed with this spool with a few backlash the other day when I was kayak fishing. And uh, cause it's windy, right? I have not gotten the line into the side during that day. And most of my cast testing video, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Like I don't really put this uh, thing down, like it breaks so low that I'm always backlashing. But as you can see, seven is not a good number. So eight has been the lucky number here. Get the, the distance. And um, so I, I won't count the, the seven at 70. Um, that went to the left a little bit. Let's try again, one more time. I wanna give you guys a, a fair, accurate number. Okay, that is definitely 70% of the way. This upgraded bearings with the spool is definitely good. Definitely good. Now I'm gonna put the, my normal lure on, a 16 tile jig head with a soft plastic, and then I'm gonna put like a probably heavier lure just to see uh, how far it goes and how uh, much impact you have with the micro bearings. Because micro bearings, it'll help you cast lighter lures out easier, but you actually may sacrifice distance depending how heavy your lure is because eventually you gotta hit that cap on uh, how fast your bearing can spin. And that means it's not gonna, you know, get in faster and not feed anymore. All right, guys, this is the bread and butter lure last time I was kayak fishing. Just a 1 16th ounce jig head middle head. See the arrowhead? sickle hook and this custom made lure you know those who like to inject their own plastic this is from epic bait molds and uh yeah two inch swim bait it's laid all right this is pretty good i that's like 90 percent of the way maybe 95 percent of the way it almost hit the water fountain and i was fishing in eight breaks uh, on the kayak fishing video you got to check out in the top right hand corner it was like my slay day panfish galore crappies yellow perch but big, big bluegills. And the wind is blowing like crazy, so I'm gonna cast into the wind, see how it goes. Still, still pretty good, pretty impressive. I know I used a different rod last time. This is a Sorinoia C63 to ultralight, because I was actually trying to cast the lighter side, but I have no problems being confident that using the light tackle rod rather than the ultralight, I could probably hit either that even just a little tad bit further, because it's definitely a lot stiffer, and it's a seven foot rod, Thanks Ruta for that dragon rod, by the way. That's amazing freaking uh, rod. But man, I'm casting consistently 90 to 95% of the way with this 
um, set up here and the wind is blowing against me so I could probably hit up the 100% which is the 71 feet right at the water fountain. But I am done with this lure. Let's put one more lure and uh, let's see how that goes. All right, guys. Next lure, your tackle, their Z Viber, 1 8 ounce. This is a rattle trap that will fly far. All right. And uh, I'm going to watch out. I'm not going to cast towards there anymore because last time I was catch, uh, casting with the same setup, but you know, the unupgraded bearings, the stock bearings, I actually snagged that line over there. And uh, yeah, because of this soft spool i basically just broke it off myself using a stick and yeah it was sad but anyway let's cast out there and i would say i definitely would hit 100 percent of the way but uh, all right you know what I i'm gonna risk it i'm gonna cast this lure right towards the fountain but i'm gonna keep my rod tip high and just gonna crank right in and hopefully i don't hit that you know the line oh yeah i went right into the, the splash like where the fountain would be at so hit 100%, 71 feet distance, not too bad, not too bad. One eighth ounce. Oh yeah, look at that. That probably went a little further because the wind is going towards that direction. And I am at eight breaks. What I'll do is, oh, did I hit a, something else? I hit something over there and it bounced. I'm hoping that there might not be a second line because some of these fountains have two lines so that you know if one breaks, they still can retrieve it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop throwing this expensive lure, man. But uh, fall time fishing, actually very fun to throw these. I actually hit a leaf, so thank God. All right, let's throw a different lure. I'm gonna throw a top water bait and see how far that goes. All right, guys, this is another story of stick bait. I think I featured it once, once or twice and uh, a pickerel bit me off when I was fishing with a medium light tackle. But anyway, this is a five gram, five gram stick bait. Bigger than the other one. In fact, I'll just show you guys right now. This guy right here is three grams. You guys see the length is about the same, right? However, this is thicker and heavier. They both have rattles. This one has a thicker rattle, so it has like a more of a knocker. About five grams. And it definitely goes 100% of the way for sure. This is more of a sammy shape. It's freaking nice. So I'm gonna cast closer to the water fountain now and see how that goes for you guys okay and it's interesting that this lure it is hooking itself what happened when you guys have a soft line okay i landed right in front i just thumbed it but it was pretty low so i would say it hit 100 percent of the way 71 feet of water interesting very interesting i have a feeling that uh, if i had the stock bearings and uh, maybe the light tackle rod, I'll probably get it there or, or even further. But yeah, I personally believe that micro bearings doesn't always give you the distance, only for the super duper light stuff. But let's put on the, the last guy and see how that goes. But I think, I think I'm gonna keep these bearings on this reel going forward. But uh, if I ever want, I could always put the stock one because stock one, the stock diewall bearings was actually pretty good. I may put ceramic hybrid bearings on there, but um, right now I don't think I could utilize this for like the super, super duper light stuff anyway. So stick around for my review of this spool for the Di Daiwa Tatula. All right, so that's just a tad bit shorter. I put on a three gram stick bait now and that was about 95% of the way. So I'm gonna reel this thing back in, show you guys one quick look. Okay, this guy right here, you guys seen it earlier. I landed right in front of it. I didn't thumb it at anything like that. So it's like 95% of the way. In the end of the day, I think the stock bearings would suffice if you guys just get the sp chameleon spool for your Daiwa Tatula HSL, the 100 HSL. It, but if you guys really want to throw the lighter stuff, like the more lighter stuff, you guys probably would benefit just a little bit, but with the stuff that I throw, typically, I don't think I need it. In fact, I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I don't really do like uh, the trout magnet and it doesn't do trout magnet anyway. So is it worth your money for micro bearings? I don't think so. This is the last lure I'll throw today. It's a jerk bait Z spender from Euro Tackle. I put single hooks on it. So um, it's like three grams, it's, it's 3.1 grams. Okay, it's not too bad. 
So this is supposed to be a suspending jerk bait. So maybe I get some of these uh, bass to bite here. But casting distance, it was probably like 50, 40% of the way, 45% of the way. Let's try again. All right, so that's actually 55% of the way, but it has the backlash. I know this uh, wind here, I'm a break nine by the way. The wind is picking up a little bit. And uh, that always sucks. Just a little bit overrun. I probably slung it too, uh, too hard, but the brake should be fine if I just leave it at, at this braking right here. So softer cast should do it. So definitely not too bad. Definitely gonna be throwing this for trout. And that's why uh, I actually swapped it to single hooks. Oh yeah, 55% of the way. Easy, easy breezy guys. Not too bad. I actually like the upgrade. I think if I remember before, I didn't really uh, cast too far with most of my stuff anyway, uh, jerk bait, because jerk baits are pretty uh, bulky. It's probably better off using spinning gears. And if you guys want to see me throw like, you know, shallow school spinning gears, leave me a comment below. I can look for one of one or two of those for specifically jerk bait fishing season and stuff like that. Or maybe even, uh, you know, trout magnet <laughs> fishing. Stuff that I don't typically do. Oh yeah. Oh. The wind is picking up. Let's wrap this video up. All right, guys, we are back at the lab and let's wrap up today's video session. So yeah, guys, I upgraded the bearings here for the 2019 Tatula. I gave it Roro micro bearings and I found that using these micro bearings helped me cast that ice fishing jig at 1 16th ounce very good. However, even with the light spool, I was not able to cast that trout magnet at any distance. Like if you guys ever seen my other video with the Daiwa Alpha's Air, that reel could cast a trout magnet one gram lower. So if you guys don't plan to throw anything that's ultra light, I don't think you guys really need that upgrade. Like I could actually cast that ice fishing jig relatively far, but if you guys don't need to even cast things at that light level, I think the stock bearings, or if you guys upgrade the bearings to just regular size ceramic hybrid bearings, you guys will have a fun time with this reel and this shallow spool uh, upgrade from Chameleon DIY. Now, this was just a short cast testing session. I'll keep using these bearings for the rest of the season whenever I take this reel out. I am loving this setup compared to my CDM stuff. I think after using this uh, reel for a couple times, even with the stock bearings, I feel that this setup here blows most of my CDM reels out of the water. Uh, even those uh, reel with uh, you know the uh, bearing upgrades, this reel, this feels so much better. So yeah, I'll continue using this reel for a little bit, but by the end of the year, I'll do a final review of this reel and a spool because this spool right now is so amazing. If you guys haven't tried it, you guys definitely want to try it out. Check out the link in the description below, non-affiliate of where I've gotten it. But uh, I noticed recently on AliExpress that more and more stores are selling it. But uh, if you guys want like fast shipping and you know, um, you guys want to believe on a, a guy that actually bought it from a specific store, just check out the link below because that's where I bought mine and I got mine relatively pretty fast, even with the COVID-19 crap. Came in less than 30 days for sure. Anyway, I thank you guys for watching. Keep those lines tight because the fish don't wait. Sit up your gears and go have some fun. BFS fun that is.